so I found this model in my pile of shame. Maybe it is not a good word for it. Henceforth I will call it the pile of opportunity or pile of promises or something like that. Shame would imply that I am negatively acquainted with this pile of models. I have a whole bunch of them and each and every one is great in some way. Nevertheless, getting back to the model itself, he was primed and ready for duty. A very lovely and full of details mini. Let's see how he came out. So before we move into the video, I would really appreciate if you could have a look at my channel. I have more than 90 videos of different format, painting clips, some techniques, shorts as well. There is quite a chunky list of videos where I struggle to paint. As you can also see, there is a whole list of shorts in which I show some current things that I am working on and the history of the miniature models. I would really like some time to show most, if not all of them. I try to post a few shorts every week and a long format video as quick as it is ready. So leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, I will really appreciate it. Also, please have a look at my Patreon. It would really help me with moving on and getting better quality videos out. Every new Patreon will also get a gift from me. There is a Discord channel ready and there will be many other stuff for all of you guys. I was looking for a proper base for him and found one. He is an admiral and needs to stand on something pompous. The base was already one and it needed a black prime. Inspect the model and find the best position. Then it is just drilling a hole and pinning it to the base. After all the trouble I went through with the Elder Banshee, I want to be double careful. The model got cleaned with some Windsor & Newton brush cleaner, as he was dusty and dirty, and only then was ready for a black coat. In some way black is easy as a base color. 
Remember though that every color you choose as a base will have an impact on your layer paints later. This is just to show you that I choose my paints according to the color wheel theory, the main ones of course. I use this spinny thing from Green Stuff World. Every time I take a paint that has been sitting for some time on the shelf. Would I recommend it? Sort of yes. It does the job, but you can do it by hand as good as this device. It will take some more time and effort. But I am a lazy bastard. The main color for the cloak was going to be purple though. I gave him some ivory spots to put the brighter layers on. This is what I was talking about previously. I could layer a brighter color on the purple and then a brighter one and another one, but I want not to build up too many coats and therefore the ivory as a base. The lighter colors would come from a mix of this paint and some ivory. After putting all of the layers, I would blend them using fat glazes on the borders of the two paints.
The next thing to tackle was the metallic NMM. I used my usual mix of Incubi Darkness as a base paint and then mix it with ivory in different proportions. You can make as many mixes as you want to soften the transitions, but with NMM it is sometimes good to have a rapid switch from light to dark. Google some images of for example metallic armor and you will see what I mean.
The metallic parts were done and the next thing on the chopping block was the leather. Why leather now, you might ask? My preferred way of painting is starting with the elements that are either smaller or hidden a bit in the model. This allows me to paint later parts that are exposed and not ruin my previous work. As you can see I gave this skin a base paint of Bugman's Glow. It was just for the fun of seeing the model partially get done. It is very nerve wracking when such a small miniature takes so much time and I sometimes give some parts base paint to make me feel better because the model looks more completed. I wanted to make a triangle of red points when looking at the model from the front. Both guns and the scarf were perfect places for this. Just three shades of red blended with some wet blending and fat glazes. The edge highlights got yellow paint. It stands out nicely on red.
Now to be perfectly honest, I did not approach the Golden NMM correctly. Ochre Brown has terrible coverage. I don't know why. It took several thick layers to paint over black. I should have started with a brown layer and then paint over it with different shades and follow it up by blending. Nevertheless, know your paints people. This was a valuable lesson for me. The other thing and I will lend you a secret here. Nobody cares where you place your highlights. If they are more or less okay, you will be fine. Many creators have done some significant videos on highlight placement. Watch them and make up your mind. If you still don't know, then just take a picture of the model while being placed under a lamp that will imitate your source of light. It is easy and will show you almost perfectly where to place highlights and shadows. One more thing for the NMM. Every kind of metal to be honest. You need to have big contrast. What I mean by that is dark and bright colors. If not, it will not look very convincing. I skipped here the part where I painted the boots and the pants. It was not intended, I had a long clip on it, but I think it got deleted by a mistake. I can't just find it. Nevertheless, the boots are leathery and I used the same colors as for the other leather parts. The pants were initially painted blue and highlighted, but this did not match with the rest of the model, so I painted them over black and left uh, them with grey highlights. I wanted him to be kind of a dark blonde dude, so the hair got a light brown base and then it was just adding more and more ice yellow to the mix and painting the individual strands of hair.
I was quite unhappy with how the face turned out at first, so I painted it over with Buckman's glow again and tried a smaller palette of colors on the hands to see if it would fit. Still not perfect, but much better. All of the details were ready and it was time for the base. I gave it a thick layer of pale grey blue. At first I was trying to be precise and not to paint over the holes between the parts of the base. This however took too long and then I painted the whole base and used Drakenhof Nightshade for the recesses and a watered down version to give the base some darker spots.
And this is the finished model. Please don't hate me for the eyes. Those are really tiny and I was doing them a few times. The rest apart for some patchy spots came out quite nice. He is a very rich and detailed model and you can tell a great story uh, with your paints. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe and see you in the next video.